Welcome back to Channel Water. Today we're going to talk about the blueprints for life, how the designs and the origin of all the forms and the architecture we know is actually found in water. If you think about it, where are the blueprints? Where could we find the design, the inspiration, the designer, the architect for life? Somewhere it has to be. And the one thing that is unique to the work we're doing here is Faces of Water. It's a photography that we invented here that allows us to see water for the first time. So what does it mean when you can actually see the forms, shapes, the blueprints for life for the first time? It's important to remember as we walk into this subject that we don't know really what water is. We don't know what consciousness is. It's two things that have a strong connection between them, and that's the part that we do know. Both consciousness and water are invisible to our eyes, the way we describe the soul, the spirit, and the way physically that we can't see with our eyes the movements in water. And even more important is to remember that water is a symbol, right? We're not talking about which we're talking about an unknown. So we're going to take this unknown that we call water as human beings from our point of view and we're going to take that material which is very different from all of matter in this world, all of the solids and elements that we know and we're going to try and dive deeper into that matter and to see what we can find there. So don't look at water as the simplistic H2O or the simplistic physicality that we gave it, the identification we gave it. Look at it as an unknown, as a symbol for something, some connection between the material world and pure consciousness, something that is far more abstract. It's the space between the two. If we want to see life, if we want to find those blueprints, life has to be in movement. And the same thing with water. If we want to see the form of water, the time that we see it is when water is in movement. That's when it will show us its true form. So life itself, if it's stagnant, not moving, like a rock, you won't find any knowledge there. You won't find evidence of the forms of life, the force of life. And once we realize that Movement is the force of life. Movement is something that is much bigger and deeper than what we think. It's not just a kinetic phenomena. It's actually an evidence for some kind of will, some kind of desire, intention. In philosophy, the way we see it is that if something is moving, either that object is conscious and made a decision to move from point A to B, or a conscious being put it into movement. Either way, consciousness has to be involved. And you can look around you and you will not find any objects that move on their own, unless they are themselves conscious, like plants, animal, people, any vessel of water, or consciousness put them into movement, like self-driving car, satellite, space station. It's always hard to talk about water from the point of view of a human being when we're in this vehicle, in this architecture. Uh, we have a video about how water is invisible. And for us specifically, because our identity is water, we are the water looking out, the one thing we don't see is ourselves, because we're designed to see everything but ourselves. And especially when you're inside of water, First of all, you don't see the water, like fish, for them it's like air for us. The water is not there. And as vessels of consciousness, you wouldn't be able to navigate through that substance if you saw it, right? Think about swimming inside of milk. That's what the equivalent would be. You wouldn't be able to function and see everything else. So with our eyes, we can't see water. We can't see the movements in it. And once you see the images of faces of water, you realize how much you don't see and how much is just right there in front of us. So our concept 
of what water is, our concept of what we can and cannot see as human beings um, is very problematic and in the way of understanding the life that we came out from, which is water in that case. Right now, as human beings, we're trying to talk about water when we are actually outside of it. And then, even when you are inside of it, meaning, let's say when you die, and the water in your body goes back to the water, like your soul goes back to the bigger ocean of consciousness, at that time too, it's, you won't see it as water. At that moment, you're part of that one ocean, and it feels more like energy, the spirit, the soul, it's something that is far more abstract than any definition we can use words to describe. And the last thing you would think about is water, which is a word and a category that exists from outside here. So however you look at it, it's not easy to talk about it. It's not easy to talk about consciousness, because that's actually what we're talking about, about consciousness itself. And then water is that medium, it's that place where we can see something about consciousness from outside in this material world. So consciousness and the life force is abstract, it's invisible to our eyes. But the moments that we can see it is where it's mixed with water, right? So it's like you can't see the wind, but then if you throw some dust into it, suddenly you can see it. You can see the wind, you can see forms or shapes. Here, it's a bit different. You have the architecture that is built by the life force, by consciousness, and it's built by using matter. Matter is what's, in, what's actually visible to our eyes. So when you see a plant, you see the structure, you see the architecture, we see the matter. But the matter is built like a skin, like the clothing onto the life force of consciousness in this case, water. And we have a good video about it that's called You Are a Walking Tree. And over there we explain like what would happen if you could only see water, if matter was invisible, right? So what we see at this point as human beings is matter. So we see the exterior, the walls, the buildings, and from plants to animal to people, cities, roads, all those things are basically the walls and the exterior structures that are built around the life force. They're built around it. And the geometries that it takes is a combination of the two. Water, consciousness, the life force has free and infinite expression. And it's in three dimension and it's beyond anything that we can express and even imagine. But then matter itself has limitations. It's like Legos, right? You can only put a certain blocks a certain way. So then the two mix together, and then you get certain forms, certain shapes, architecture. So one force, which is life, is not limited, but then the matter that we use has its own limitations. And basically, the compromise between the two is the structures that we know and see. And the more we develop our technologies, the more intelligent and complex life gets, the better we are at using matter, analyzing it, and creating even more and more complex structures, more and more complex architecture. Until now, we gave all the credit to matter itself, to dead elements. We gave them the credit of somehow they randomly, without purpose or meaning, come together and create structures. And we took away the agent, we took away the actual life force, we took away meaning, intention, reason. And once we can see the blueprints, once we can see into water, now suddenly we see the designs, we see the blueprints, we see the architect we see that there is something much deeper and there's much more intentions and design within the nature that we know. And it fits with what we find. Because what we find in nature is order, structures, and we'll talk about it in a minute, but the golden ratio, for example. 
So the nature around us is full of order, efficiency, intention, intelligence. Yet somehow we manage to fool ourselves to think that, you know, over millions of years, that could come up. That the reason there's so much intelligence and complexity in nature is because of time. And that actually doesn't make sense. Not only that it doesn't make sense, we actually see that evolution happens much faster than we thought. That the life around us evolves and adapts to the situations it's in much faster than we thought, not millions of years. And in some instances, it's immediate. What's unique about this channel and what we talk about here about water is that we have knowledge we gained from being able to see water for the first time. So faces of water, the photography method that I invented that allows us to see water, was possible by putting a certain liquid into the water and that liquid film allows us to capture those movements in the water for the first time. And to be able to see that gave us the understanding of what the significance of movement, how movement is the life force, how movement is what shapes everything. And we'll talk in a minute about what drives movement in consciousness. But first, to be able to see those movements, to see how those movements are all the life forms we know around us, that everything we know, everything that we, um, all the forms of life that we thought took thousands of years to come about, actually exist already in water. These are the blueprints. A dolphin, the shape of a dolphin, didn't come up from thousands of years of evolution. That shape exists in water. There's a blueprint for it to begin with and we'll explain how that came about. A lot of the knowledge we share here comes from philosophy or science, and in this case, it's the visual field into the science of water, the ability to see forms, to analyze them. Just like you see um, the drawings for a building, we call blueprints, you can analyze the building, the structure, um, the intention, why things were built the way they were, the structures of it. So here, for the first time now, we can see those in water. And we can see and we know that life started in water. That's where it happened. And we know that matter itself will not do anything. You can take all the rocks you want, put them in a basket and wait a thousand years. Nothing will happen. But if you drop them into a lake, bacteria will start building up. Life will start. Life starts from scratch every day on this planet. It's not like there was a moment where it started and never happened again. Life starts every day from scratch in water on this planet. So to be able to see that for the first time gives you a view into those forms, those shapes, and more than that, the movement, right? So we use the word movement a lot, but it's important to understand that life is a movement and music is movement sports political movement social movement everything you know is actually a movement within the body of consciousness and that movement takes form and gathers around it matter which becomes the architecture so that's how consciousness shapes things in the physical world matter itself has no intention it does nothing other than serving as like the, you know, as you walk in the sand and you leave your footsteps, as you are dancing and creating a certain movement of matter around you, um, whether it's in politics, whether it's in sport, in music, in every field, it's that abstract movement that is nothing really, that is moving matter itself into place. And life as we know it is that process of making something out of nothing. As consciousness, it's pure abstract being, which is in a way nothing, moves towards 
a certain idea, a goal. As it's moving towards that, it's becoming matter. It's becoming an object. It creates that life that we know now. So it's actually consciousness as it's moving away from itself and then separating itself into those vessels, into those objects. And the further away you move, the further away you are from the source, from consciousness as being just the pure being. So right now as a person, you are away. And the more matter you are in a way, the further away you are, right? So, and you can feel that now, you can feel and know that you're like an astronaut outside of the body of consciousness. But you can just imagine consciousness as the source, then moving from nothing into something, right? It creates something. So on that way, it creates both matter and that dance between water and matter. And then you get this architecture. So life is that, it's that movement. And then when you look at nature, you see that nature is a movement of growth. So there's this constant movement from consciousness into vessels of consciousness. It's almost like, imagine the ocean as being homeless and what it does, it's building and creating homes for itself. So there's constantly movement of moving water into architecture, the soul into a house, into a home. And we are those homes. That's pretty much our purpose in life. In the background, you will see images of faces of water, just movement in water. Those images are not microscopical. They are in real scale. Most of them are pretty much like around this size of movements in water. So the complexity that you're seeing in these images are not microscopical. These are the images you would see if you just looked at the aquarium of a fish in your house, a glass of water, a pond. The movements translate up freely in scale. So, and we'll talk about that in a minute in the golden ratio and what it means, the fractal of life. But what we can see right now with the images of water is that that structure we describe of the H2O, which means that you have an O in the middle and then there's two H's on the side. That structure translates up seamlessly. So from the smallest atom you can find, you will have those O and the two H's, all the way up to the images we see here, which are quite large and we'll have that same structure. And then, if you think about it, this is the basic structure, that's the first blueprint of the movement into the material world, into life. What you have is the center unit, and then you have those two H's, which helps you navigate in the material world, right? So, let's jump forward. Let's say you have, um, a rocket in space. The only thing you need in order to navigate this thing in that open liquid of space is two small rockets that will help you navigate in any direction, in any way, right? Now, from that first H2O, that first basically fractal of water, that's the driver in nature. That's what will move a bacteria and then an animal and then a person. All of life starts there center unit and then you have those two small what becomes arms and legs as our evolution expands it you'll see it opening up from those two into legs and arms that opens up into any kind of vehicle right so from a car where you have the engine and the two wheels to a bicycle where you have again the engine and the two hands to an airplane when you have the center unit and the two engines Anything you look at will always have that same structure because it's always the same driver, right? So consciousness through water drives matter. It's always the same driver. And for that reason, you can see this, that basic structure scales up. The fish with the fins, exactly where the O and the H's are. The bird, the wings, any structure you look at, and that's why we start to see that the order in nature 
follows a certain blueprint that we find first in water. So that's just a basic form that informs us of who the driver is and what the mechanism is. So with that basic structure we see the mechanism of the driver but then it becomes even more complex because we're talking about consciousness, we're talking about intentions, character. So let me walk you through how we build further the form of life and the more complex blueprints of animals, people. So imagine consciousness being the beginning of everything. At that moment it is nothing. Then it decides to do something. It has an intention. That intention now creates a movement, right? So it's a movement away from nothing into something. We have an actual physical movement towards a certain goal. That movement means that now, just like the wind we talked about or a current of water, it takes a form between the something that is not moving and the something that is moving. Now there's a form, there's a shape. That form informs you, or you can see from that form, it has to do with the character which is determined by the intention. Right? Like my intention is to, you know, if it's something that's like a shark, or the intention is a dolphin, very different intentions. And then the form follows that intention, and even that function, right? So now we have intention, movement, form, character, that character now has a certain experience within a space, within the physical life, and that those experiences are stored in that body as memories, and now you have a personality. You have the full package of the beings that we know of, animals, people, plants. We have something that has its own intention, its own character, its own experience, memories of experiences, which all together shapes a personality. And we will have a video that is just dedicated to that. What is personality and how come? We're all one body of consciousness, yet we have so many different personalities. But for this specific video, I want to talk about mainly form and shape, so we can understand how the intention into movement creates form. And now when we look into the water, we can see all of those movements. And we understand that those movements are actually characters within the body of consciousness. And there are infinite characters within the body of consciousness. And when we look at animals, what we actually see is pure characters. Because we don't stop and think about what is an animal? Like, what, what is that? Why are they so extreme and extremely different? And the range is, you know, between a rabbit to an elephant to a lion to a bear. Like, there's infinite amount of characters and differences between those animals. And they're so pure in their character. Um, so when you understand that what you're looking at is just the pure characters within the body of consciousness taking form in the material world, you understand what animals are. Now, while they have their own character and they have that play of characters, they serve a function. They are housing for consciousness. Like we said, the spirit, which is homeless in this universe, creates a home for itself in plants, animal, people. So human beings evolved to be the basically the ultimate cell, like we're a cellular structure for consciousness. And we have the video about what is the purpose of human beings, where we explain that part, the cellular nature of human beings. But like I said, now we just want to understand how all those characters of consciousness are actually visible just within water. We can see them. Every animal you can imagine, every movement, 
you can see in just water moving in water. Those blueprints are there. Nothing in this world is random and meaningless. Not only that it's not random or meaningless, when we look into nature, what we find is the golden ratio, which in a way is a spiral. As you know, the number of pi, we all heard about that. Life, the architecture of life, anytime there's a structure that comes to life, plants, animals, people, cities, they, any scale, you will always find the same movement in it, the same golden ratio. And that golden ratio is basically the mathematics of a spiral. And what's unique about the golden ratio is that that movement and that mathematics allows for infinite growth. So within the spiral, each section is exactly the same like the next. They're always the same, just a different scale. So it allows you to build on cells forever. So you can always build on it and add, create a larger one that is exactly the same, just bigger. And both in our philosophies and mythologies, we always say that you know everything is above, is below. Everything is the same, just in different scales. The cellular world is as social as our world. Like in every scale, it's always the same thing, just bigger or smaller. And that design allows life to grow infinitely. And I think that's an important part of the movement of life, especially when we look at all the water in the world, the ocean, the water in the universe. If we use it as a symbol for consciousness, which needs to go into homes and houses and like there's so much growth that we need to do and infinitely out into into space into the universe so that spiral structure which then gives us the fractals the, the fractal structure is part of our infinite growth and the intention to continue that growth and build on the last so just like a building, you always build the floor onto the next. And I think that's why it's important to understand that our nature is one of construction and not destruction. We're here, we're here to build on the next. So we're not here to destroy the past. We need to package it, capsule it, and build the next step and the next step. And it always gets, in a way, bigger and better. And now we are in the biggest transition where it's not bigger in the sense of like, you know, the dinosaurs could not leave this planet. So at that size, it can't continue growing. But once you have the human cell, now you can package those cells in any size, you know, space station or space colony or so humans are in that way, the space, you know, we, we are the first space shuttle to leave this Earth. We just package it in matter and create rockets, but we are that. The human being was created to do that function of being the next cell. Just like we're made out of a hundred trillion cells, all conscious cells, there'll be larger structures of life that will be made from a hundred trillion people. And can you even imagine what that would be like? You know, the complexity of, and the intelligence of such structures. So what we find in the architecture of nature is we find universal laws, which comes from fluid dynamics. And the golden ratio, those, that spiral movement, is something that actually stems from fluid dynamics, from the movement. And, and we think again of water, but it's something else deeper than the water itself that is giving that movement into water. But you will find the golden ratio in a galaxy or in a cell in a body, in the flower, in any animal, a tree, the branches, the roots, any movement of water or spirit consciousness in space will take the form of the golden ratio will always be there 
So now we can see that. We can see those universal laws. We saw it in the architecture itself. Like I said, we saw it in matter itself, right? So it's basically, it's more the traces that life leaves behind it in matter, like the footprint. So like the river shapes its way through the land. And then when you, as you see that river, the river spreads out and opens up, right? Like the branches of a tree. That is the golden ratio as it goes from one to two to four to eight. So we see that always in the traces in matter. But now that we can also see water itself, we see that we find both those spirals, the golden ratio in it, but we even find that fractal nature in water itself. We find the origin of it. And it's very important also to see that in the universe itself, out there, we really don't know exactly what... Um, so it's like, you know, fish in water, we are inside of air, our planets are inside of something in the universe. And we call that dark matter. But I would argue that it's actually dark water. And again, it's not the water that we see as the ocean that is wet and condensed in a certain way. Because we are in water right now, but we call it air. It's just a matter of how disperse the density, the distance between the water molecules. But in space, it's just even bigger, even more distance, right? Because that's the golden ratio. Things open up more and more as you get further from the center, from the source. So ocean, atmosphere, dark water, whatever we call it. So I think it's, it's odd we call it dark matter, because again, we give matter the credit for something that it's not. We know where the matter is. It's all those rocks floating in space, all those stars. That's the matter. But what it's flowing in is dark water. It's something else. It's something, and I use the word water as an unknown. It's a dark unknown. That unknown is usually the life force itself which makes more sense that it's the life force itself moving those galaxies, moving those rocks, just like the water is moving matter here. So again, it's an invisible life force that is moving dead matter. And there's a small side note to that. Um, we always think about what are black holes, and we talk about the Big Bang. So I don't think it was a Big Bang. I don't think there was any explosion. I think it was the big splash, right? So it's more, there was this injection of dark water, let's call it, into a universe of matter. And that created all of that spin and movement. And a black hole is an injection point. So a black hole is like where that injection happened from the nothingness of consciousness, which everything is possible, into an actual possibility, which is the universe and that movement, as we know it. And it makes sense too, because we know that we can't lose energy and everything is contained within something, right? So while we think the universe is infinite, actually it's, it's encapsulated, right? So it's inside of absolute nothing. And that's why everything is contained within that. And we see those movements within that. And you can see how there's a certain liquid dynamics. There's that spiral movement, the movement of those fluids from that injection point, from that splash, that is keep, keeps going. If the universe was infinite, then all that energy will move on infinitely out to somewhere. So, we would not be able to contain it in any one place. We'll actually lose it, and it will disperse infinitely somewhere. But the reality is that there's no such thing as... It, nothing goes anywhere else. It's always contained here. There's no loss of energy. So that means that we are contained, and what we're contained by is nothing. And that's one of another video I'm going to make, which is probably one of my favorites, about 
uh, what exists outside of time and space. And basically it's no space. So uh, I'm going to make that video soon. But I think it's just important for us to understand that the blueprints of that spiral movement, of that liquid dynamics, comes all the way from the inception of life, from nothing into something, into this universe, into our cells, animals, people, and it follows through. If you look at our architecture, cities, you'll still find the golden ratio. Everything we make, everything we do, has the blueprint of the golden ratio of the origin movement that created life. And fluid dynamics, that golden ratio, is an expression of movement within an invisible substance, right? So that movement within that dark water, that dark matter, creates that. It's what, and, and being encapsulated within something, that's what creates that movement, right? So I think we can start identifying the source and to see how it's both by design, so it can infinitely grow, but also because it is encapsulated, and seeing how that move movement then translates into every structure, every being, from a cell to the universe. We always separate between water and matter, between consciousness and the building blocks, and that separation is important only for understanding the architect and the architecture, right? So in reality, there's no separation. It's all consciousness. As it's becoming and becoming something, matter is being created on the way there. So matter itself is basically a dream of consciousness. Matter itself is something that consciousness brings to life, but it brings to life for a purpose. And because it has a purpose and a function, it's very orderly, it's very functional, it's a building block. It itself does not have an intention. It's there to help us achieve the intention and the goal. So we have a full periodic table of elements, which we can use, it's like a full spectrum, a rainbow of materials that will allow us to build and create anything. But those elements are designed to stay in place. That is the, the word itself, you know, place, or to have something that you know will stay in place. If you build a house, you want it to stay there. If you have a car, you don't want it to move unless you're driving it. So when we look at matter and we try to find the source of life, or the blueprints or the agent and we give that credit to matter we're doing something wrong we're fooling ourselves and we're actually ignoring the life force the architect and you know you can't blame anyone because it's an invisible force to our eyes right so from this point of view it's something that's very hard to see but once you see it you can't ignore it anymore because then you actually understand where the blueprints are, who is the architect, who is the designer, and the level of complexity that exists, the intention, purpose, meaning that exists within life. And I think that really brings us to talk about evolution, which it's a subject that I always go back to. I think it's a subject that really hurts us. The idea that evolution is random, that there are no blueprints, there is no design, there are no intention, life is purposeless and meaningless, and it drives a lot of people into a place of despair, depression, and feeling that they don't belong. While the reality is exactly the opposite. You belong, you have a purpose, there's so much meaning, there's so much work to do. Life is full of intention once you understand what it is, and what we're going to, and why, and, and it's really important too. So I always use every chance I get to show that intention, show that purpose, show the meaning, 
And especially now when we can see it through faces of water, through those blueprints, the fact that a shape of an animal exists in water, just water itself, just a movement in water, and then translates all the way to that actual animal is mind-blowing. It's exactly the opposite of, of what we were told, that any animal you know took millions of years to take that form and that shape, and that it didn't happen by intention from inside, it happened by natural selection from the outside. When the outside is nothing, there's nobody there to select, there's nothing, it's a it's total contradiction. You can't have the word selection and randomness and nothingness, because to select, you have to have an, an idea of something that's better than the other. And you can't have that idea that something is better if you're not conscious and have an intention. Because if there's no meaning, there is no meaning. You can't survive without the will to survive. A rock survives. The moon has survived. There's no situation where the moon is doing better than it is right now as a rock. So to understand that, it's so important because we constantly get our mind poisoned with ideas of complete randomness, meaningless life, no purpose, and only because of political reasons. And here politics doesn't exist. Here we talk about life and its own nature. So it's not politics, religion, nationalism, none of those things exist here. Here we talk about the spirit itself detached from any human structure. We're just talking about water. And water is the actual identity, the actual body of consciousness. Everything else is a secondary step. Everything else is further away from consciousness. You are further away from home. So it's important not to be attached to ideas that are created when you are much further away from home. So today I wanted to share with you that connection between the images we see of movements in water to the golden ratio, the movements in life, especially through the images here where you see the two together and how there's an architecture of life that has universal laws that come from consciousness and follow through matter, that life is that dance between consciousness, water, through matter. And as we dance, we rearrange matter around us and create architecture. To see that water is a phase between the abstract consciousness to the completely dead matter, right? So it's something in between. Water is like a glove on the hand of consciousness. If you don't think that water is the spirit itself, then you can see that it's a phase between, right? It's a place that the spirit comes in, reaches out to touch matter and move it and build things. I wanted to make this video today because I'm always asked, why water? What is it about water? And to me, it's, why not? How come you're not seeing this thing? Well, I know you're not seeing this thing. That's probably why not, because water is invisible to our eyes, but it is the only active, agent on this planet. It's the most magical material, substance, I would say it's not even matter, on this planet, in our existence. It is the life force. It is the agent. It is where life started. Every mythology, every religion, philosophy, they all describe life starting in water. Water being the source of life, if not life itself. So, for me, there's no question of why water. It is the one thing, the biggest unknown in our life right now that we need to focus on and see. And we can find so many answers also to our, even our social problems through water. To understand that I am a body of water and not this architecture. It's not my sexual identity, it's not my race, it's nothing about my architecture, this vehicle, this building that is who I am. These are all structures and buildings of division and separation for the different cells. But when we truly understand that we are all this one body of water, one ocean of consciousness, 
that then builds out all those structures, we can understand so much more about who we are, our true nature, our unity, and the fact that there is no separation. So water will always bring you closer there than matter. Matter is about nothing. It's about division, building blocks. It's something that you can use in a functional way to build architecture. It has nothing to do with the spirit, the character, the intention of life and the life force. So I encourage you to look through the different playlists and to see through the lectures how we explain how water is the body of consciousness, how we can't see water with our eyes, how water is not matter. And then you can look through the playlist and see faces of water. And over there you can see hundreds of images, which are the blueprints for life, and understand how all those movements are just pure characters within the body of consciousness. So I hope the video today might have answered a few questions about why water, the design of nature, the blueprints of life. And as always, share this channel with anyone you think might be interested. Ask any questions in the comments. I'm always happy to answer and create videos that will answer your questions. And thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.